Hi, Paul Coker here from OneBloodyDrop.com and uh, today I'm here with Rachel Hunter Dunn. Rachel is a long distance open water swimmer and she has type 1 diabetes. Uh, she's an expert athlete and if you want to see how she prepares for an, an open water swim or how she manages her diabetes in an open water swim, please see the previous two videos that we've created on those very subjects. But this video in particular, we're going to be talking to Rachel about how she manages her diabetes after a long distance open water swim. So Rachel, thank you for joining us here today. Yes. And, and thank you for sharing your expert knowledge with us on what you do before and during a swim. So obviously that they are critical steps, but for me, when I go and do a, a run, uh, a half marathon, I'm, I find that it's highly likely that I'm going to go hypo after a half marathon. And I'm guessing that you have a similar experience when you do a long distance open water swim. So how do you manage your diabetes afterwards? So are there any special measures that you take after you've done a long distance open water swim in terms of managing your diabetes? For example, do you need to run a lower basal weight? Do you need to eat more carbohydrates? Yeah, so I tend to make sure I've got a lot of food lined up after an open water swim. You want to come out of the sea and eat cake, basically. <laughs> um, so my, Sounds my, like a fine excuse. Yeah, exactly. All swimmers love cake. Um, but yeah, my sugar level tends to drop um, after a long distance swim, so get ready with the carbs, definitely. And um, sometimes uh, what I have done and what works is to lower my basal rate on my insulin pump. Um, and then I just test my sugar level more because, yeah, you just don't want to run into... Hypo preventing a hypo is just much more important than actually having one. So if you can prevent it and not have one, then that's always key. So I'm just aware that it would probably drop after a swim. So, okay. so just test more, yeah. Do you find that there are particular times of day that are better for you to do a long distance open water swim? And I ask because I know that if I run a half marathon in the morning, the recovery time in which I'm most likely to go hypo is whilst I'm still awake. It's in the evening. Is that the same for you when you swim? Um, I tend to do my exercise in the morning just because that's the sort of routine I've got into and um, I can, I suppose what's, I mean it's difficult if you want to do a temporary basal rate sort of a couple of hours before, if you're doing it first thing in the morning that can be quite tricky, but I think it's just knowing in advance what you're going to do, I find it quite easy, quite, sorry, quite useful to plan my exercise for that week and just know sort of what I'm eating the night before so I'm ready for the morning. Um, so yeah, I do prefer to sort of get it done in the morning and then um, I find that it's easier to manage my levels throughout the day from exercising in the morning and, and adjusting the pump accordingly, yeah. I think that's really important because most people, if they decide they're going to go for a run or they're going to go for a swim, they'll just, in that spur of the moment, say, oh, I'm going to go for a run, I'm going to go for a swim. Yeah. But for those of us with di diabetes, we, we're actually planning that hours before perhaps even days yeah. before we actually do it and that's really the one big concession that I make to my diabetes is, is that I don't go out and do a oh today I'm going to go for a 10 mile run and I'll just go and do it I've actually thought about it yeah and it sounds as though that's the same for you when you do a swim it is yeah especially if you're doing long distance stuff um, I mean there are times when I, I don't plan for it and then you have to sort of adjust accordingly um, but it's just so much better when you do plan um, you know like with anything but it just works when you plan doesn't it it does it really um, does. every day is different but if you've got a general plan then it's really helpful okay. thank you and uh, I uh, I've said it before, I'm just completely in awe of, of the thought of going and swimming eight kilometres. I, I, I just can't get my head around anybody doing that. And I, well, I couldn't. Yeah, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that knowledge with us. Thank you. And, uh, we'll uh, keep on supporting you and we'll thank follow you. your progress. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rachel. So I hope you found that video useful. Please subscribe to OneBloodyDrop.com. We are on a mission to go out and find people with diabetes who are doing all different disciplines of sport so that we can talk to them about how they manage their diabetes during their chosen sport. And my mission here is to help other people with diabetes to participate in whatever sport that they choose to do. And uh, please subscribe and follow us and we will see you on the next video.